the last year, the Hyundai Tucson has been the best medium SUV that you can buy. It's polished, it's refined to drive, and it's good value, so all the things that we love. In fact, the Hyundai was so good that it caught the rest of the competition by surprise, and they've been scrambling to catch up. Well, Volkswagen's latest Challenger is now ready, and it's this bigger, better second-generation Tiguan. So what happens when Hyundai's reigning champ comes up against a new product from VW, who've got quite a habit of making simply superb cars? Well, to find out, we've brought along the posh version from each of the respective ranges. And there's a reason for that, because the data shows that if you don't buy one of the base models, most people step up to a really well-equipped car. So which one is going to be Australia's best medium SUV? Jump in with me now, and let's start finding out. So let's start with a quick overview of this pair of very blue 2 litre diesel SUVs. The Hyundai makes 136 kilowatts and the 400 newton meters of torque arrives early in a narrow band. The more expensive VW makes 4 kilowatts more and the same torque which kicks in later but stays over a wider range. But we'll start the comparison in last year's champ, the Hyundai Tucson. Jump into the Tucson and you're immediately put at ease. This is a really refined cabin, it's attractive and it's logically laid out. Here in the Highlander model you get these supportive leather seats. They're really comfortable, they're well bolstered and they've got good adjustability, but they don't have memory so couples will have to keep adjusting them back and forth. That said, it's nice and easy to get comfy. The technology in the Tucson revolves around this 8 inch touchscreen. It's crisp and it's easy to use, particularly the sat-nav. Plus, it's nice and fast to pair a Bluetooth phone, but the stereo could use more punch. And whereas the base model Tucsons get Apple CarPlay, strangely enough, the Elite and Highlander models skip it. Also, the Tucson's starting to date a bit here in the gauge cluster, which can't show you your current song or your next navigation direction. The surfaces in here can feel quite premium. For example, the steering wheel and the gear shifter, they feel great but other surfaces are a bit scratchy, like up here on the dashboard, which really should be something a bit softer. However, the Tucson is quite practical. You do get two cup holders here, plus some cubbies ahead of it, and a nice deep central bin here, plus some door bins, although they don't get the felt lining to stop things scratching around. In the back of the Tucson, you really benefit from the light from this standard panoramic sunroof, something that would cost you $2,000 extra on the VW. And you can also see, for me at six foot, I've got okay headroom, and I've also got sufficient legroom sitting behind myself here. And you could get three across if you needed to. The seats don't recline, but you do at least have this flip down armrest, which has a couple of cup holders in it, and you do have air vents to keep the fresh air flowing in. And you've got door bins that can fit a water bottle back here as well. Say you've got your hands full with the Hyundai, it does have a really cool feature where if you stand here for a few seconds, the boot will open straight up without you doing anything. And once the tailgate's open, you've got an okay amount of space. So there's 488 litres back there. You've got a couple of uh, hooks in there so you could hang your shopping without your eggs falling to pieces. However, you can't fold those back seats unless you walk around and do it by the lever on the side. Hop up into the Tiguan and close those reassuringly heavy doors and yeah, you notice straight away that it's nice and luxurious in here. You get this really soft leather on the steering wheel and soft surfaces up here on the dash, though not everywhere escapes scratchy plastic. The seats in this Highline model are leather, and that leather is also optional on the popular mid-range comfort line. And although the Hyundai has slightly better side bolstering, in every other way, the seats in the Volkswagen are slightly better. They're softer, they're even more adjustable, and they've also got memory which couples will appreciate. But it's with technology that the Tiguan really sets itself apart from the Tucson and every other medium SUV. You get these digital gauges called the Active Info Display as part of a $2,000 safety pack, but they are absolutely groundbreaking. They're incredibly crisp and responsive, and they're able to put functions like a full map, audio, and a host of other things safely into the driver's line of sight. It's the best piece of technology available in the interior of a medium SUV at the moment. This central 8-inch touchscreen is standard across all Tiguans and it's actually really good and it comes with Apple CarPlay as well. This is a practical car too. There are felt line door bins so your stuff doesn't scratch around. There's a really big cup holder zone here in the centre and other useful cubbies scattered around the cabin. The old VW Tiguan was a small SUV but this one has moved up in size quite a bit, particularly in terms of width so at a pinch you can definitely get three people across here. 
And the Volkswagen's boxy shape means that you're good for headroom, I'm six foot, and also good for legroom sitting behind myself here. And the Volkswagen has a few tricks too. So firstly, you've got these tray tables so the kids can pop a snack on or maybe a coloring book or something on a longer trip, which is great. You've also got this flip down armrest, which has two and a half cup holders in it. You can recline the seats a little bit to send your back passengers off to sleep on a road trip. And you've also got some felt line door bins down there too. Open up the electric tailgate on this Tiguan Highline and you'll find that it's got heaps of space in the back. There's actually 615 litres, which is about 25% more than you get in the Hyundai and it's plenty of space. Plus, while there aren't any nets, there are two deep pockets either side of the main boot floor, which is great. And in a feature that we really like, you are able to drop those rear seats from right here in the boot, which is really convenient. Where it's quite easy to split these cars is on price. Everything is standard on the Hyundai Tucson, which is about $47,500 before on-road costs, except the $600 metallic paint, which brings it to about $48. Keep in mind, the Hyundai has a sunroof as standard, which you have to pay a bit more for on the VW. And in general, the Volkswagen is just a little more expensive. So this Tiguan Highline is $50,000 before on-road costs. Then you add the $700 metallic paint and the essential $2,000 driver assistance pack. So you're looking at about $53,000. However, the VW justifies this increase with much, much more tech, a more practical interior and that bigger boot. These two medium diesel SUVs may look really similar on paper, but actually they're pretty different in real life. And a major difference is in the character of those diesel engines. So here in the Tucson, we've got a 136 kilowatt, 400 newton meter diesel. So ever so slightly down on power from the Volkswagen, but actually it's a bit more refined. Firstly, it's quieter. So it gets less of the trucky vibrations coming into the cabin that you get in the VW. It's about as strong throughout the rev range, but it's less hesitant. So there's a little bit less turbo lag in the Hyundai. More significantly, there's less transmission lag because we've got a six speed conventional auto in this car as opposed to a double clutch, which can be ever so slightly hesitant at low speeds. The Hyundai is like the VW, quite sporty for this class, but it's sporty in a different way. Instead of being sort of firm and planted and super grippy like the Tiguan, the Tucson feels more agile and particularly more light on its feet. And it's actually quite a fun car to drive. It's comfortable as well because Hyundai's Australian engineers have done a lot of work in customizing the suspension to our unique conditions here. But really it's a much of a muchness between the two cars and they both end up being pretty comfortable to drive. Unlike the Tucson, at the moment the Tiguan is only available in top trim with a diesel engine. A turbo petrol option will arrive later using the 2 litre turbo from the Golf GTI and that should be thoroughly entertaining and probably the one to have. This one is the 140 TDI diesel making 140 kilowatts of power and 400 newton metres of torque and it does feel stronger than the engine in the Tucson from the mid range and this car can actually be pretty quick but it's a little bit hesitant off the line partly from turbo lag and partly from a little hesitation from the 7 speed DSG automatic. And around town, the Tucson does feel a little bit more nippy in this regard. However, like the Hyundai, this car has pretty sporty driving dynamics. It feels a little more mature and grown up and Audi-like. So it sits really flat, it's grippy, and it has good steering feel. Like the Hyundai too, the suspension is super well sorted. Although the Tiguan doesn't get a locally tuned uh, damping setup, it's really good out of the box, which is great. And as you'd expect, given it's a brand new car, it's also got more autonomous safety features. As standard, all the Tiguans get autonomous emergency brake, lane keeping assist, blind spot warning, and a superior reversing camera. And optionally, you can add more stuff like adaptive cruise control, the awesome digital gauges, and an around view camera as well. I get lots of requests to include some off-road driving in these videos. So we subjected this pair to a couple of hundred kilometers of typical Australian dirt roads. At this trim level, both the Tucson and Tiguan have all-wheel drive as standard, but the systems behave quite differently. The Hyundai is noisy on dirt and feels slightly fidgety, plus it allows more slip, especially at higher speeds. The Volkswagen's four motion system feels more secure on loose dirt, channeling power more seamlessly and carefully, limiting unwanted slip. Out here, the Tiguan is definitely quieter and more composed. And that leads me on to my conclusions about this pair. We drove these cars over a thousand kilometers and came away certain that there's never been a better time to buy a $50,000 SUV. These are excellent cars that sit right at the top of this class. 
The Hyundai Tucson is the most rewarding to drive, and it's a credit to Hyundai that their diesel is quite a bit better than that in the VW. The Tucson is arguably better looking too. The new Volkswagen Tiguan is bang up to date. It moves the SUV game forward with incredible tech that has never been so affordable. It's also comfortable, and like buyers wanted, it's bigger, and as such, practicality has gone up. Though the diesel is a bit trucky, and the forthcoming petrol will be a better buy, that's not enough to stop the VW from just snatching the Hyundai's crown in this class. So that's it. The best 50 grand SUV you can buy right now is the Volkswagen Tiguan Highline. Let me know your thoughts below, and thanks for watching.